The following podcast was recorded at the Wells Low Vision Support Group, which is held the first Thursday of each month in Wells, Maine. Steve Kelly, a vision rehab therapist for the Iris Network, uh, did a presentation on the Amazon Echo and Google Home for the support group. Steve also runs lowvisiontech.com website. That's L O W. V-I-S-I-O-N-T-E-C-H dot com. Okay, here we are at the Well Support Group, and we're going to be, and today is the 4th of May. So um, what I brought was a couple of digital assistants with me, and I have uh, Alexa is here, Google Home is here, and of course Siri is here with the iPad. And what's interesting these days Sorry, I'm not sure. is that all of these assistants are coming on different devices. So in some ways it's very confusing because now you can find the assistant on the Echo who will remain nameless because every time I use her name she'll say hello. It's Alexa who will now say hello probably. But you find these you find these assistants on all kinds of different devices. So that in itself is confusing. So I might find uh, Alexa, the digital assistant, on my Kindle Fire tablet, or I might find it on the Amazon Echo. But let me focus on some of the standalone stuff. Uh, by that I mean like the Amazon Echo and Google Home. What I like about these devices is that for somebody who's not really a technology person, if they have a family member who's willing to get it set up initially, once it's set up, you don't really have to spend too much time with the technology. If it's working, it's working. Of course, if it's not, it's just, it's not. You'll have to call that family member back. But usually the way they work is that you have to have a, a Wi-Fi going in the house, and that's just wireless internet. So for example, Brenda, I know that you have Wi-Fi in the I house, do. and you know what that is. Yep. Nancy, do no, you I use Wi-Fi? No, okay. Don't. Do you know what I mean by Wi-Fi? Yes, I do. Okay. Yep. So you, you would get that from the cable company or from the telephone company, and they would install it and set it up. So that just means there's a radio signal that's transmitted in your house, and on that radio signal is, is internet connectivity. That's all it means. And it's a miracle to me. Uh, I don't know much more about it other than when it's on. You can connect to it if you're lucky, and if you can't, you've got to call the service provider. That's all, all I know. So if you have wireless in the house, then you can connect one of these devices. The standalone devices that I, I brought today are the um, Amazon Echo and the Google Home and both of them are devices with very few buttons on them. You plug them into the wall, you connect them, and after that you use your voice to interact with them. So the big challenge is just remembering you know, how to do certain things. So for example, let's just try something simple with the Amazon Echo. The the wake word or to get the device to respond is just the name of the assistant, which in this case is Alexa. So I would say, Alexa, what time is it? The time is 10.45 a.m. Okay. Alexa, what's the date today? It's Thursday, May 4th. Alexa, what's the weather in Wells, Maine today? Right now in Wells, Maine, it's 55 degrees with clear skies and sun. Today's forecast has partly sunny weather, with a high of 59 degrees and a low of 41 degrees. Alexa, what's 253 times 28? 253 multiplied by 28 is 7,084. Alexa, what is a 15% tip on 
fifteen point zero percent of thirteen dollars is one dollar and ninety five cents giving a total of fourteen dollars and ninety five cents alexa what's on my calendar today there's nothing scheduled for the rest of the day alexa would you schedule an appointment for me today at noon sure and what's the name of the event lunch I'll schedule lunch today at 12 p.m., okay? Alexa, what's on my calendar today? There are no events scheduled for the rest of the day. What happened to lunch? <laughs> Alexa, do I have an appointment today at 12? There's nothing on the calendar for today at 12 p.m. I think reason it's not because she says, is that okay? And you didn't say yes. Ah. So I think that's what happened. And you didn't no, say maybe. yes, that she didn't schedule it. Alexa, will you put lunch on my calendar today? Okay. For what time? 12 p.m. That's lunch today at 12 p.m., right? Yes. Okay. I've added that. Alexa, what's on my calendar today? Today, there is one event remaining. At 12 p.m., there's lunch. <laughs> Alexa, can you spell the word supercalifragilistic? Supercalifragilistic is spelled S-U-P-E-R-C-A-L-I-F-R-A-G. Alexa, stop. So those are some of the, just some of the, the simple things that I think of that also have a practical side, you know, doing the multiplication, the date, the weather, and it's kind of gimmicky, but some of it is important. Um, but the echo also allows you to add skills to it. Think about skills like applications, like if you were going to add an application on your computer, or these days with the smart devices, people are always talking about apps. For some reason, the maker of the Amazon Echo, which is Amazon, decided they were going to call their application skills, just to make things a little more exciting. So, if you had somebody setting this up for you, what they would do is they would have their computer or a tablet, connected to the Echo, and they would look through the skills and say, oh, would you like me to add this one? So, for example, I added something called Pandora to this, and are you familiar with what Pandora is, Brenda? It's like a music service. The only Pandora I knew about was a jewelry. <laughs> a jewelry. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pandora is, a, is, they call it a streaming music service, but if you think about it, it's just kind of... Um, music that comes to you over the internet. So for example, if I said, um, Alexa, can you play Elton John on Pandora? I don't see a Pandora account registered for Steve. You can register it using your Alexa app. Alexa, switch accounts. Now in Associates' account. Alexa, can you play Elton John on Pandora? Should I add a station for Elton John to Associates' as Pandora account? Yes. Okay, I've added it. Here it is. Alexa, turn down the volume. Alexa, turn down the volume. So it started playing something from Elton John. If I didn't like the song, I could say, Alexa, skip this song. So it's skip to a Beatles song now, but it's it's kind of the same sort of music as Elton John. Alexa, stop. So that's you know that's kind of one of the nice things about it. And the the Amazon Echo comes with a decent speaker, mm -hmm. so I could I could probably fill up this room with the speaker. Oh yeah. 
Now, one of the things that I really like about the Amazon Echo, though, is, believe it or not, for educational purposes. So, for me, I, I like sharing information about technology with people. And I've been thinking, so how does a person who doesn't use technology on a regular basis get a little bit more familiar, especially if they're at home? Maybe you don't have the opportunity to go to an adult ed course or something, or maybe you just don't want to. You'd like to do a little bit of learning at home. I found that with the Echo, I can ask for podcasts. Do either of you know what, a pod, what I mean by the word podcast? Yeah, my granddaughter used to do them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally like asking for a station to come to you over the internet. So it might think of it like as a technology radio station, which sounds really boring. Mm -hmm. and, and in some cases, it is quite boring. But one of the stations or podcasts that I like to listen to is something called Cool Blind Tech. And they tell you about the latest technology. And uh, I also like um, a podcast called Apple This, A-P-P-L-E-V-I-S. And it's about Apple products and it's for people who are visually impaired. So those two I find particularly informative. Sometimes cool blind tech talks over my head a little bit, but, you know, a lot of times there's information. So I'm going to ask the Echo to play the latest podcast from Cool Blind Tech. Alexa, play Cool Blind Tech from TuneIn Radio. You'd like to listen to Cool Blind Tech, right? Yes. I can't find the station Cool Blind Tech on TuneIn. Alrighty. Alexa, play the podcast Cool Blind Tech. Getting the latest episode of Cool Blonde Tech. Here it is from TuneIn. So now we come to Alexa, turn up the volume. Why don't we start with Joel? Uh, What's your cool pick? Alexa, turn up the volume. Because everybody knows I'm always buying all kinds of audio equipment and looking for better sound, better mic, better speakers. And Alexa, I, pause. I don't care if Sony one of the interesting things that just happened is that I gave it a command mm -hmm. and it said uh, there's nothing on TuneIn Radio for that. That's usually the way you get a podcast. Mm -hmm. And then when I cut that out, it said, okay, I'm finding cool blind tech on TuneIn Radio. And I find that sometimes that happens with, these, with any of these devices is oftentimes they're quite good at understanding what you're saying, but sometimes they just totally fail and you have to try it again a different way. But it did find that recent um, podcast, and that was just done two or three days ago. Somebody broadcasted it, put it on the internet, and here I have it. I could listen to the whole podcast if I wanted to, but I'm going to stop. The other nice thing I found was that um, newspaper radio reading services. Do you remember Main Airs? Yes. Yeah, okay. So we still don't have main airs, but some states still have their radio reading services. And there's one in Kansas called the Triangle Radio Reading Service. And on that re uh, radio reading service, I think you can get the New York Times at certain points of the day, maybe the Wall Street Journal, and some other local news. But mm -hmm. I thought, what if I could get the Echo to connect to that one, because it's also broadcast on the internet. Alexa, stop. Alexa, play the Triangle Radio Reading Service from TuneIn. Triangle Radio Reading Service from TuneIn. Um, it shows Alexa, a black and white photograph. Nisbet, who's in the background to the left. And Holden Macklemore, they're talking and texting on phones as Durham Elementary School students, teachers, and parents hold Alexa, their stop. And protest inside Center. So it did connect to the radio reading service. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you're on the computer, you right. can find that. But for somebody who's not a computer user that is looking for, you know, a radio reading service, you can't tune that in with your radio. 
Mm -hmm. The only way you can get it is on the internet. So I was able to find at least one, and there's probably more of them out there that I could find. So I thought, well, that's kind of a cool feature, too, if a person wanted to connect and listen to the newspaper being read during the day. But I found all kinds of other skills. I mean, there's a skill for reading the Bible, if you want, and you could tell chapter and verse of the Bible, and it would read it. So if you wanted to read Genesis 10, chapter 3, if that was a favorite of yours, you could add that skill to the Amazon Echo and do it. And there's many, many other skills. I mean, I think that there are over 10,000 skills that they've added to this thing. I have a question. Yeah. Um, for practicality, could a person put on and, and use it to, uh, like, keep track of what their bank balance is in their checkbook? They couldn't, and that's a really good question because there are a lot of practical things that we might want to do that none of these devices is doing yet. So, for example, they're not able to make a phone call at mm -hmm. all. They're also not able to send a text message or an email message. And those are, I think, in some ways, those are pretty big flaws. Mm -hmm. um, you, you could order an Uber uh, ride taxi if that's available in the area. You could do that using the Echo. The best that it will do is it will create a shopping list for you. And for me, what I've done is I created a shopping list on this where I was giving the different commands that I might use in a presentation because I couldn't keep track of them all. Mm -hmm. But the really cool thing is that you could create a shopping list, a grocery shopping list, that if a family member had the Alexa app on their tablet, they could actually go into the tablet and look and see what your shopping list was, mm -hmm. or you could have it read the list back to you, and you can add to it. So let me take a look at that. Alexa, what's on my shopping list? You have five items on your shopping list. A bunch of bananas. Cooking directions for a turkey. Wikipedia for screen reader. Story. Bananas. Alexa, add tomatoes a can of soup, and a watermelon to my shopping list. I added tomatoes, can of soup, watermelon to your shopping list. Alexa, what's on my shopping list? You have six items on your shopping list. Here are the five most recent. Tomatoes, can of soup, watermelon, bunch of bananas. Alexa, stop. And so you'll notice that she did add the most recent items. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you can't do is you cannot delete that. I mean, you actually have to go into the app on the, the tablet or have somebody do that. So it's kind of clumsy, but it will allow you to add like different pieces of information to it. It wouldn't have to be a shopping list. I mean, it could be something you heard on the, the TV that you wanted to remember. You could add that to your shopping list. So it's got some fundamental ways of capturing that kind of information. Well, even, like I was going back to the checkbook thing, mm -hmm. even though she wouldn't store the checkbook in it, you could basically use her like a calculator. Yes, you could, yeah. So you could give her your balance and then ask her to deduct in the different things. Right, it's kind of like a talking checkbook. Way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the Amazon Echo... And it's, it, 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 it's at the end of the table, so if you yeah. want to go down and check it out. Um, the one that I brought is the full-size Amazon Echo, and Amazon sells that. And you can, I think you could also get it at Best Buy. They sell it for $179. They have a version called the Tap, which is slightly smaller, and I don't think it's got the really good speakers on it. It's, it. it's got speakers, it does everything that this one does, but it's a little bit smaller. That one costs $129. And then they have something called the Amazon Dot. And the Dot is the size of a hockey puck, if you know what that mm -hmm. might be. It's the same, it's just as round as this one, but maybe only about an inch high. And it plugs in. And that one, I think, is $59. 
And it does everything that this does, it just doesn't have the great speakers. You'd actually have to put in um, a headphone or run it through your stereo system or something like that. But I think for $59, if you're on a real budget, that's, that's a pretty good price for something that responds so well to your voice. The other nice feature that they're building into both this and the Google Home is I could get light fixtures in my home that connect to the Echo. There's like three manufacturers. And it's hard to imagine, but the light fixtures have like a little radio receiver on them. And when they're connected to the um, Echo, I could say, turn down the living room lights, and it would dim them or turn them off. And there are other appliances that they're getting the Echo to talk to. So, for example, uh, th some of the other appliances are your um, thermostat. Um, somebody had like a, a set of blinds that they had connected to them. Um, air conditioner. You can also get like um, something that plugs into your outlet and then you plug something into it like a, flint, a fan. So, for example, you could tell it to turn the fan down to half volume. All of this stuff could be done with your voice. So, in a way, you can kind of imagine what's happening is that their companies are looking at these devices and configuring appliances so that we'll be able to speak to these devices and have them make changes. It wouldn't surprise me to find an oven and within the next year or two that works with the Amazon Echo where you could say, turn the oven on, set it to 350 degrees, or and then turn the oven off or something like that. So they're really building a lot of interesting stuff into these devices. Um, that said, let me share what I consider one of the big downsides. Inside the Echo, in order to make it work, it has, I can't remember whether it's five or seven, but it's got pretty powerful microphones. So that means that I could be in the kitchen over there and I could say something to the Echo and it will probably hear me and respond when it hears the keyword. Those microphones are on all the time when this is plugged in. There's a little button that you can press that turns the microphones off. Amazon will tell you that they store 20 seconds of sound at any given time. So let's say you're having a conversation around the dinner table and your echo is there in the room. That conversation is being recorded and sent to Amazon over the internet, 20 seconds of it, because it's constantly listening for that word Alexa. That's what brings it awake. And it kind of gives me the creeps, to be honest with you, because I just feel like, well, they're telling me that it's only 20 seconds, and they're telling me that it's not kept, and there's really nothing that goes on in my kitchen that is worth <laughs> noting, but it, it kind of concerns me that that's, yeah. you know, we have technology that is kind of recording what's happening in our homes. So I had one in my house for a little while, and my partner and I got into the habit of turning the microphone off, assuming it actually does turn the microphone mm -hmm. off. But, you know, I tell that to people because I, I think it's something that is it just it's worth thinking about. Mm -hmm. You know, do you really mm -hmm. want to have an appliance in your home that is recording information and sending it to, you know, who, who really Some knows where? space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, it's a trade-off. I think it's a really interesting trade-off that consumers are going to be making more and more these days where we trade certain personal information for the benefits. I, I just love some of the benefits of the Echo. I think it's wonderful that I can listen to podcasts and I can ask for that kind of information that normally is a little difficult to, to listen to or to, it's, it's hard to find especially with a vision impairment like you know back in the day you could open an encyclopedia and mm -hmm. you could read about um, mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln or something and it's more difficult now but Alexa 
Tell me a little about Abraham Lincoln. Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa, do you have information from Wikipedia about Abraham Lincoln? Sorry, I don't know that. Wow. Normally, she'll go to Wikipedia mm -hmm. and give me some information. Alexa, when was Abraham Lincoln born? Abraham Lincoln was born on Sunday, February 12th, 1809. What does Wik Alexa, what does Wikipedia stay, say about Abraham Lincoln? Sorry, I'm not sure. Well, that too is kind of interesting that you, you get certain pieces of information. At one time, I was able to get a nice little piece about his presidency, what he did in the Civil War, and you know, it was probably about two minutes worth of information that Normally, I would have had to go and try to read, but it was nice just to be able to get that information right by asking the question. Now, is the um, Amazon Alexa, the, the Echo, mm -hmm. is that better than the one, or do you prefer it more than the one that you have for Google? You know, that's a great question. Sorry, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, I did use her name. <laughs> prior, prior to this morning, I would have told you that my preference was the Amazon Echo. Just because, uh, again, because you could get it in the dot version where uh -huh. it's $59. It's relatively inexpensive. There's um, a professional who works for the VA who does presentations nationally. And recently he started um, recommending uh, Google Home to veterans. And so I asked Drew why he was doing that, and he just said that he finds it a little bit easier for what they're looking for, mm -hmm. and uh, he'll still recommend the Echo. So the VA is, is recommending Google Home. Each one has got different high points. So I think if, if you're intrigued by one of these devices, it would be worth, like, trying to decide what's most important to you. And I'll give you an example. The Echo does not do a great job with recipes. Um, Alexa, how do I cook a hard-boiled egg? To boil an egg, put a pin hole in the round end to avoid cracking. Alexa, stop. The Echo will do simple things like that. Maybe mm -hmm. tell me how long to, to boil an egg, some of the simple stuff that you might do in a kitchen but it's not going to give me a recipe for a chocolate cake. Um, you could add a skill to one of the websites that's got a lot of recipes mm -hmm. and play around with it. But I noticed one of the cool things about the Google Home was right out of the, right out of the box, um, I could get a recipe for a chocolate cake, or I could get a recipe, you know, it goes one place and, and it will read the directions to me and, and all of that. So I thought, well, you know, for somebody who's using it in the kitchen, and if that's their priority, hands down, it would be the Google Home, because it does a better job than the Echo. But uh, there was something that I noticed that the Echo did much better than the Google Home. I mean, at some point, they're all going to be really, really similar. Um, but right now, it's, you just kind of think about what, you know, what are some of your, what, what are your priorities? What is it you'd really like it to be able to do? And then do the shopping that way. Now, is the Google Home a device like the Echo that you can have set up separately? Or yeah. is it something you have to still do through the computer? I'm going to move the Amazon Echo over on the other side of the table. And then I'm going to bring Google Home over and if you actually if you wanted to come down and sit at this end and just take a look at them you're welcome to or do it when we're done so it's the same idea it's a separate device and I'm hoping it's connected hey Google are you there I'm here and ready to help hey Google what time is it the time is 11.10 a.m. Hey Google, what is the weather in Wells, Maine? In Wells, it's 57 and sunny. 
it'll be mostly sunny with a forecasted high of 57 and a low of 42. Hey Google, what's 23 times 2,356? 23 by 2,356 is 54,188. Hey Google, give me directions to the Kennebunk Inn in Kennebunk. The best way to get to the Kennebunk Inn by car is via me 35S and will take about 9 minutes in light traffic. Hey Google, what's the phone number for the Kennebunk Inn in Kennebunk, Maine? The Kennebunkin can be contacted at 207-985-3351. Hey Google, can you find the phone number for Kittery I in Kittery, Maine? You can call Kittery Optometric Associates at 207-439-0410. So you see it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of the same sort of a yeah. device where once it's set up, I'm just giving it voice commands kind of a different sound. Um, and the Google Home is there's only one flavor of it. You can get it in different colors because it, it almost looks like what are those little um, decorator um, uh, home deodorizers, you know, where you, okay. you lift yeah. the, the cap up. It's kind of like a big, it looks like a big one of those. Um, but it's, it's the same idea. Now, um, Hey Google, can you play Cool Blind Tech podcast? Sure, playing the latest episode of Cool Blind Tech, Cool Picks, May 1st, 2017. So now we come to our favorite. Hey Google, cool stop. Now, one of the things that I've, I've added a couple of things um, using my tablet. So, for example, I like to listen to NPR news. So, I, both of these will play like the latest from National Public Radio. Hey Google, play my news stations. Here's the latest news. From BBC Minute at 8.38 a.m. today. Hey Google, skip this. From NPR News Summary at 10 a.m. today. Support for this podcast and the following message come from State Farm, offering insurance protection for when things go wrong, as well as products and services for life's possible. Hey Google, stop. Agent information is at statefarm.com. State Farm, here to help life go right. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Corva Cole. Hey Google, the House stop. Have so you see, and, and I've, I've added a couple of things. I had the BBC News, I had um, CNN, I had um, NPR. And there's a, a couple of things that you can select. I think I even selected like a, a daily briefing from, uh, from the um, New York Times. It's not reading the newspaper. It's not connecting to like the York County Coast Star or anything locally, which is unfortunate. But you can get some of the, the stuff that, that you might get on the radio, but it's a little more customized. So now I can just get it when I, I want it. I don't have to be right at the, the radio. Now, you said you added it. How did you add it? Do you have to I, use a different device? Or yeah, you what, I, to it? what I did was I connected one of my tablets to the, um, it was the, it's for the Google Home. I had to get the Google Home app and put it on a tablet and then make those selections. So again, for somebody who's not a technology user and doesn't want to be bothered with that stuff, they'd have a family member just kind of set it up for them. You know, and you might ask the questions like, so what kind of news sources would you like? And you'd click the buttons. And once it's set up, then you could just ask for that information. Do you have to set up? when you use the Alexis? You do. It's the same sort of a thing. For So for example with the Amazon Echo, I would have the Amazon application open on a tablet or a phone and I'd be selecting the skills. They just call them skills. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I wanted NPR on the Echo, 
I would do the NPR skill, or I think they call it like the news briefing skill. So there's both of them do require a certain amount of setup, like what information do you want? Mm -hmm. It's that piece of it was really pretty simple. Um, you download the app, put it on the device that you're that you want, and it was it was pretty straightforward. That wasn't too complicated. Again, for somebody who's not a technology user, though, it, it would be. I mean, this is all, that's all new stuff, you know, downloading things and, and getting the app to connect to the, the Echo or the Google Home. So if someone in my group wanted to get one, but they're not technology savvy, how would they get it set up? Well, what, first of all, I would want to make sure that they had Wi-Fi in the house. Mm -hmm. And if it was worth them having the Wi-Fi, because these days, Wi-Fi costs about $25 a month. How You can get it through, I guess it's not Fairpoint anymore, but you used to be able to get it yeah. through the phone company. I have it through Fairpoint, and it's $39 a okay. month after they add all the taxes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a fairly high speed, I'm yeah. thinking. I think the bare bones um, Wi-Fi through Fairpoint used to be somewhere in the high 20s, like 20 something or other. Mm -hmm. um, but that's about as that's about the least expensive that that you're going to get it. So first of all, you have to be able to make that kind of a monthly commitment to have Wi-Fi because that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. You know, some apartment places have um, like a, a public Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. um, so. You know, if you're in a, an assisted living or something, a lot of times there, there may be a public Wi-Fi at no cost. So that's step one. The second thing is that you would really need to make sure that there is either a family member or a support person around to set it up for you. And I had this conversation with somebody from the VA, so I would be reluctant to set somebody's device up because then I would, be, I would have to be the support person. So if there was a problem, they would be on the phone with me mm -hmm. looking for support. And I think that that could be a problem. I think the best thing would be to have either a family member or a staff member, like at assisted living, do the initial setup. Mm -hmm. So at least you've got somebody to go back to if, if you're not using the technology. You know, the other option is just to bond a little bit more with your smartphone or your tablet. It's really you know, up to the individual. But I, I think it's I think it's very usable for somebody who's not a technology person. They just need to find that support person. And it could be a kid, mm -hmm. you know, it could be their grandson or granddaughter too, who's just willing to answer questions over the phone or come in and, and you know, manipulate what they need done uh, on, on a tablet. Well, my next question would be is, what if you don't know what to put on it? If you don't know what you're looking for, yeah. if you just want to use it in general. Well, I think, again, you would if you had somebody who was providing a little bit of support, um, they could give you some idea. But at the same time, on both of the devices, let's look at the, the Google Home. Hey, Google, what can I say to you? Let's talk about movies. Who's your favorite actor? Brad Pitt. Okay, I'll remember that. Hey Google, what commands can I say to you? Here are some suggestions. You can say, Mad Libs, or what are your fears? Do you want a couple more ideas? Yes. Here are some more things to try. You can say, what's the temperature? Or set an alarm. Want some more? Yes. You can say, car, in Chinese, or, when is sunset in Orlando? To see more examples, check out the Google Home app. So, you can get some information, but ultimately mm -hmm. they're going to send you back to the, the Google Home app. She did remind me of something, though. These are great for alarms, too, uh, mm -hmm. or timers. Gosh, um, I when I had the um, Echo in the house, I was always using it as a timer. It was just so much easier to use that than the kitchen timer. Mm -hmm. um, Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. 
two minutes, starting now. And in two minutes, it's going to go off, and, mm -hmm. and I'll stop it. Hey, Google, find me a recipe for a cheesecake. I can help you make that. Would you like me to find you a recipe, or would you like to choose your own? Find me a recipe. Okay, I've got a recipe called Chan Hall's New York Cheesecake from All Recipes. This recipe serves 12 and takes about 7 hours and 30 minutes to make. Before we start, preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 175 degrees Celsius. Let me know when you're done. And then she'll continue prompting me for the rest of the recipe. Mm -hmm. I, I, that, was, that was one of the features that I thought was so yep. great about yep. that mm -hmm. in particular. Hey Google, stop. Um, so I do think that you know a person who was going to get involved in something like this would probably want to do a little bit of research uh, mm -hmm. about things that they could say. Now, um, a couple of months ago, I wrote an article for Vision Aware, which is a website. It's visionaware.org or visionaware.com. And I compared the Amazon Echo, the Google Home, and I think there was one other device that I compared. I was just talking about the digital assistants. But if you read through the article, that will also give you like some idea of the different things that you can say. And because both devices are so popular, um, there's plenty of stuff out there that's being written about them. So I think it's pretty easy to find out like some of the different things that each one uh, will, will say or some of the things that you can do with each one. Nancy, did you have I'm any sorry. questions? <laughs> it, it, I don't know what I think about. I know. I know. Sometimes it's, kind of, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming. It's fascinating. Alexa, stop. Is that your timer? That was the timer, yeah. And it's you get the same tone for the alarm. You mm -hmm. can set an alarm. And it seems like the Google Home will allow you to set reminders, but I haven't quite figured that out. So, mm -hmm. for example, you could say, remind me to take my medication at 4 p.m. And I don't know whether it comes on and says, take your medication, or whether it just sends, uh, gives you an alarm at 4 p.m. and you have to guess, mm -hmm. well, what, what did I set that for? Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. these things are getting more and more sophisticated. They really are. It's kind of fascinating to see, you know, what's happened with them in a relatively short period of time. I think with both of them these days, you can. Uh, there's a couple of, of uh, gross or um, restaurant chains like Domino's Pizza, and we we don't see Domino's Pizza. I think there's one in Sanford, maybe, and then there's mm -hmm. one in Portland. So there, it's not like they're around us, but in a more urban area, you can have this order of pizza at the local Domino's and have them deliver it to you, or you know, set a time to pick it up. But there's a couple of other restaurants that it will work like that with. It, you know, wouldn't surprise me that you could put in an order to McDonald's with one mm -hmm. of these and, and pick it up. So they're just kind of uh, adding all kinds of stuff to these as, mm -hmm. as time moves on. I just continue to like it only because I see it as one piece of technology that, you know, if technology isn't your thing, but you really want to, to add some of this to your life, um, this might be the way to go. Get your grand, get your grandkid to to help you set it up, and then you know write down some of the commands, like some of the things that are of interest to you. Um, the other thing that I really like about the Amazon Echo is I've got an Audible book account. Do you, are you familiar with what Audible books are? Mm -hmm. So you you download the the books or you you buy an Audible book. Um, Alexa, read my book. Getting the book from Associates' Audible Library. Resuming the boys in the boat. There's 14 hours, 24 minutes left in the book. This is Audible. Okay. Penguin Audio presents The Boys in the Boat, 
nine Americans and their epic quest for gold at the 1936 Berlin Olympics by Daniel James Brown, read by Edward Hunt. Alexa, forward. Prologue. In a sport like this, hard work, not much glory, but still... Alexa, yes. stop. So I've got I have maybe three or four audible books in my library. All right, now next question. If you have an auditory book like that, does it pick up where you've left off? Yeah, it does. I was... I was reading uh, Ted Koppel's book, Lights Out, mm -hmm. or trying to, and, and I never did finish it. But um, I was doing using that book most of the time for demonstrations, and each time I would would pick it up, it would pick up the same place that it left off. And I'm not sure with Audible if I could select, you know, go to page 200, but I can move it forward five minutes or back ten mm -hmm. minutes. So a couple times I had gotten lost or like fallen asleep or walked away mm -hmm. and I had to just go back a half an hour and found my place pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, Audible's not necessarily an inexpensive way to, to listen to books, but if you can afford Audible uh, and connect it to the Echo, that that is a really great way to read. It's, it's very simple and you've got a good narrator. Ted Koppel's book was narrated by himself, so mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a pretty good reading experience. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice way for somebody to get back into reading too, is just to uh, to do that, to set up. And well, I, I've just noticed that go, going to the state library to get my talking books, that they do not record everything, and it's and it's hard getting some of the books it that is. I'm wanting. Yep, I find the same thing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, too. You know what's really good for that, just FYI, is the, um, since you're an iPad user, there's an app called Voice Dream Reader, and Voice Dream Reader connects to Bookshare, and I think probably for both of you I'm talking like Greek, but Bookshare is a subscription service that you can get if you have a print disability. If you're a student, for example, and you could even be a student of the Hadley School, if you're familiar with the Hadley mm -hmm. School. Okay. If you're a student of the Hadley School, that makes you a student, and your Bookshare subscription is free. There's no charge for it. If you're not a student, it costs you $25, or I'm sorry, $50 a year. But you can download 100 books a month for the year, for that fifty dollars. So if you're a big book reader, mm -hmm. it's pretty mm -hmm. inexpensive. It is. Once you have, once you become a subscriber to Bookshare, you get an app like Voice Dream Reader, and that costs fifteen dollars for your iPad, and you just connect the two. So you basically tell Voice Dream Reader to connect to your Bookshare account. You put in the username and password, but then you can just download your books and. <clears throat> Bookshare is constantly constantly has the latest books. I listened to something on NPR the other day where they were talking to an author whose book came out, I think, like in March. And I thought, oh, what are the chances that Bookshare's got that? Sure enough, I went and I did a search, and there it was, and I downloaded the book and I put it on my iPad. Now, the, the big difference, and it is a big difference, is that... Um, those books don't usually have a human narrator. It's it's the Voice Dream Reader app that is reading the book to you. So you have you're a Jaws user, so you're mm -hmm. accustomed to this. It's the computer reading it to you. Very so mechanical. sometimes, yeah, sometimes the inflection is not great. Mm -hmm. um, I I have a good what I consider a pretty good voice on my Voice Dream Reader, and I don't mind it. I crank the speed up a little bit mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of these things, and I find it's it's a a pretty good voice, and it's not too mechanical. Um, but I really I, I love that particular app. I think that's a great way to get more recent books. Now, if we had like an Echo or a Google, and we bought the subscription through them, would it be 
like you said, like Ted, Ted Koppel or whoever recorded the actual book, would they be the one doing the reading? Unfortunately, no. These, neither one of these devices connects to Bookshare right now, mm -hmm. which I think is a big disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the only thing that they work with right now is Audible. So you would have to have an Audible account. And as you know, you know the Audible books are $14 a piece or so. Yeah. You know, so you you can't be on a real fixed income and be reading a bunch of audible right. books. Um. So just to give you an idea, since we're since we're recording this, the Amazon Echo is about 12 inches high. It's it's uh, I have said in the past, it's almost like a the size of a Pringles can. If you remember buying Pringles in the grocery store, that's what it looks like. So it's about uh, it's circular, about three inches in circumference. And the Google Home, on the other hand, is probably about seven or eight inches high, and it's a little bit rounder. Both of them have speakers inside them and microphones. And they will also both work as standalone speakers, meaning that you could connect something to them if you wanted to and use them that way. The sound quality is pretty good in both of them. It's not great, but it's it's acceptable. There's no question about it. You gave us the prices on Echo. Which oh, the, the, Google, on Google. the Google Home is $129, and you can buy that at Target or Best Buy, so that, that's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just as, uh, I, I don't want to confuse people, but just as an aside, all of the features that you get with the Google, phone, Google Home, I have on my smartphone. I just downloaded the Google Home app, and I open the app on my smartphone, and I say to the phone, OK, Google, and ask the question. So... I have the function of it on my smartphone. If you know, if you already have a smartphone and you're willing to use it, you can put that right on your phone and have your phone do it. By the same token, I I'm looking at. I brought a, a small Kindle Fire tablet with me, and I've got Alexa on the Kindle Fire tablet too. So when the Kindle Fire tablet is connected to Wi-Fi at home. I can just do the same thing. I just push the the home button on the the tablet. Of course, it's not going to work for me now. Under most circumstances, I push the home button on the Kindle Fire tablet, and Alexa comes up, and I ask the question of Alexa. And the Kindle Fire tablets. Alexa, stop. The Kindle Fire tablets are, are pretty inexpensive. They're, you can get them at about $40, $49 these days. So there are different ways. All I'm trying to suggest is there are different ways to get these digital assistants. Mm -hmm. The standalone ones are just great for people who haven't bonded with their, their tablets and their smartphones. That's all. Okay, but other people that do not have computers or tablets or iPads or anything like that in their home, can they like get an Alexa or, or get a Google and have a family member that has those equipment set it up and Absolutely. then just bring it in their home as long as they still have to have the Wi-Fi? Right? Yeah, as long as you've got Wi-Fi in the home. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great way to do it, and that's, that's kind of why I, I like these devices yeah. for that reason. Have, you know, grab one of your grandchildren, have them come over with their smartphone or their tablet, show them the new Echo that you've got, and ask them to set it up. They'll have it set up in 15 or 20 minutes for you. And then you really don't need them around after that unless you want to make some changes, unless you decide, you know, after you use it for a while, you may start to get to know a little bit more features that it has. Have them come back over again and, you know, make some adjustments to it. I do think they're both very usable that way. Now, would you have to have someone come and set it up every time you wanted to add a, another program onto it? Right now, you would. You, you would actually have somebody come over. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, 
you raise a really good question. I think that you that that's a good question because I I almost think that once somebody has it set up, so let's say my my son Justin set mine up for me. I actually think that if I call Justin and he's 200 miles away, he can open that app on his uh, tablet and make those changes. I'm not even sure that he needs to be close to the device. Mm -hmm. I think because everything's connected on the internet, yep. that once he makes those changes to the account, that it's recognized in the Amazon Echo. And so I almost want to say that your kid could be in California or your grandchild and make those changes for you. I'm not totally convinced, but that's a great question. I'd research. Now, is it set up by like it is with my iPad that you have to have passwords and account numbers and all this stuff? Would you have to have that entered into their system before you could do this? I, yes, you actually do have to have like an Amazon account set up. But again, you could have a family member do that for mm -hmm. you uh, at the time that it's that it's purchased. And it's pretty, it actually is pretty seamless. Um, all of that stuff is entered into the tablet the first time it's set up, and then the information is just exchanged with the device. Believe it or not, like when you look at, at both of those devices, you're going to be amazed. There is, there is really, there are no, you, you plug in the power cord, and then there's literally two buttons on either one of them. There's nothing else. You mm -hmm. can't plug things into it. You can't. Uh, everything is done by um, wirelessly. It's all done through either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which is just another wireless type of way of, mm -hmm. of transferring information. Any other Thanks. questions, Nancy? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it is. It's yeah, so I just feel I don't know enough about it to even ask the question. Yeah, <laughs> it's fascinating. They are I fascinating. I would have to have the Wi-Fi in the house for anything. You would. Yeah. Yeah. How about the Kindle? Do you have to have it for that too? All of these devices now are requiring, uh -huh. you know, Wi-Fi in the house, or, um, you know, you you. With the cellular phones, they're connecting to the internet using their their cellular phone chips. That's how they connect to the internet. But you've got to have some sort of internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a question again. Sure. <laughs> um, her daughter just lives down the street. If her daughter has Wi-Fi, if she got the account number from her daughter, could she use the Wi-Fi in her home? Now that's that's interesting. Usually mm -hmm. Wi-Fi transmits about 150 to 175 feet. So mm -hmm. I sometimes tell people like in apartments or something, you know, again, if they're on a fixed income, if your neighbor has Wi-Fi, offer to, to share with them or split the bill and they'll just give you the, you know, the username and password. Mm -hmm. um, and they do and that works fine. Um, the closer you are, the stronger the signal. Mm -hmm. So if your if your daughter's more than like 150 feet away, yeah, it's could very well be a weak signal. Mm -hmm. Well, I know Muriel has it, and I don't know how she has the Wi-Fi, and because she has the Echo. Yeah, I know. There yeah. there are some very creative um, Wi-Fi solutions that are are cropping up. Like in Portland, for example, there are a couple of other companies that are providing Wi-Fi in some neighborhoods, and it's neighborhood by neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they're offering it relatively inexpensively, like for $10 a month. It's not real fast, but it would certainly work for, for this. So um, I think it it's worthwhile like asking neighbors or doing a little bit of shopping around to find out you know, what are some of the alternatives. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably, uh, I, I, I may lose you on this, Nancy, but some cellular companies are selling what's called a Wi-Fi hotspot. Mm -hmm. So that means that you can, it's, it, it looks like it's a, about the size of a business card. It just has a, 
a cell phone chip in it. So that means that it connects to the cell phone tower that's nearest you. And then it creates a little Wi-Fi hotspot. And sometimes those can be cheaper to use than $25 a month. In those cases, you just turn it on when you want it and shut it off when you're not using it. And it's kind of like a... a it's like the, the phones where it, you pay per use. So that's kind of an interesting way to get Wi-Fi these days, too. Would you buy that through, like, Walmart or something? Yeah, I mean, that one of the, I think one of the best ways to find out what's, what's available to you is if you walked into one of the box stores that was close by, like Target or Walmart, and said, you know, what, what are my options for Wi-Fi around here, you know? And, and see what they say. Yeah. Sometimes you have to slow them down. Because <laughs> <laughs> they get very tender. Yeah, 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 they can. Yeah. And yeah. these days it's just, uh, it's tough to keep track of all this stuff. It is. Just take somebody with you that's technical mm -hmm. savvy, one of your grandchildren or your oh, daughter yeah, or something. Yeah. Anybody under the age of 12. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, uh, seriously, they all they all know more than us. Oh, yeah. And, and they do. They do. They were raised with this stuff. It's second nature to them. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So on Easter, my great-grandson, who's five, came to my house, and instead of going out for the Easter egg hunt, he wanted to stay in the house and play on his little computer. Oh, I'm That's sure like, of it. Give me a break. Yeah, sometimes, oh, no, sometimes you really have to, to kind of push them out and yeah. force them to do stuff yeah. these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just hitting the stop.